you understand that whatever the lawyer says is not evidence, but we can consider what you want to say as long as you do it really quick. Because nobody else has asked for that privilege. We'll give you about two, three minutes to do it. Okay, I'm not ready to do it because we have these documents that we're okay. saying that we would like either read into evidence or offered into evidence. You can offer those into evidence. I can offer those into evidence? Yes, sir. Okay. They, do you deem that they've been sufficiently identified? What are they? They are well, I think I Duke because. Energy bills for both locations. Uh, there are Piedmont natural gas bills for one location uh, during the relevant time period. Right. You, want, you want to mark them or? Well, uh, he uh, indicated there are some privacy issues, so I don't know if we need to do it after the fact and have some redacted uh, versions offered. I want to be respectful. Of, I don't know what, he's, what he wants redacted, but the time frame, the name, the address, the month and the amount, or the date and the amount needs to be uh, well, in the evidence, and they're highly probative of how the property was being used. <coughs> you can offer those uh, into evidence, and we'll we'll look at them. And when uh, they go forward here, Mr. Roger can come up and redact whatever he deems to be necessary. Is that fair enough with you, sir? Well, it is, but it wasn't my understanding. Those are my original they records. Like original, so I didn't know. bring these in for these to be left here. Okay. And I have not had <laughs> sufficient. How about if, how about if we make copies? And be, that you have the, these back. That would be fine. Thank you so much. I have nothing to hide with those. I, I didn't think so. Okay. I, and, and I understood that there was information here that he did not wish to have disclosed, and uh, apparently that's not the case. Well, go ahead. And I will, um, actually, I think this would go smoother if I call Ms. Um, Robinson up to actually testify. So, so you're going to keep, gonna keep presenting evidence? I, am, I want evidence of, in summary fashion, of these uh, utility bills. How is she confident to give evidence as to his utility I'm going to ask her to simply to read into the record. Plus, she's he's already said, can you want me confident to read those herself? Absolutely. So we'll dispense with that, offer them into evidence, and mark them. Uh, just mark them as a group. As a group. Two minutes now? Absolutely. Thank you. Is he going to, you're going to copy well, these before he leaves? Let's go ahead and Because I'll care. save and sticker the copy, okay. not his original. That's, excellent. Well, there went 20 seconds, but go ahead. <laughs> what I'd ask the board to look at with respect to that final document before I do close is the usage pattern at the two addresses and the minimal usage of utilities at Strawberry Road during the time period that he states they were living in. That's what I would like to ask the board to review. Uh, I'm going to suggest to you that this is not a difficult case. If I truly have only um, two minutes, then I'm going to fixate on the word fixed. And that's what the statute says, a fixed habitation. How many times did you hear? We're in flux. We're in flux. Flux is the opposite of fixed in the English language. He, they didn't fix a habitation by any means. By his testimony, they did not fix a habitation. Our courts have a three-part test, not a one-part test, not just their self-statement of intent. Where do I want to live someday? No. You have to show abandonment of the prior home. And they didn't abandon Louisville. They still have it. They didn't even take the pets. And Mrs. Rotruck said, and I wrote it down word for word, we knew at some point he'd have to come home. Come home to Louisville Road. That is their home. That's where he voted in 2016. That is where he told this board his home was by voting. And going back to that same statute that you've already read from, uh, and I need one second to get to it, mm -hmm. um, that um, if a person, and I'm, you've, already, you've already cited the statute, if a person goes to another state, county, municipal, 
municipality, precinct, ward, or other election district. And while there, exercises a right of citizenship by voting, and he did that in Greensboro, North Carolina, that person shall be considered to have lost his residence in the municipality from which that person was removed. He may have spent some time in Summerfield. He may really have it in his heart and his dreams to go back, but he has not fixed a home there. His family has not <coughs> fixed a home there, and they didn't even take the pets. They didn't even take the pets. It is not your home if you do not pack it up and move to your new home and establish a new home. There's reasons for these rules, and he has not met the test. He may state an intent to move back, but under our law, that is simply not enough. He has not fixed a habitation within the meaning of the law. This is not a board of adjustments. This is not a opportunity to say close enough. And I want to go back to that December, that exhibit number 11, that December of uh, November, excuse me, 2017 deed, after the election, after the election, he signed a piece of paper, notarized it, put it on the public record that said Lewiston Road is my primary address. He stated that on the record after he was elected to office. And he has, by his own admission, by his own signature, he does not claim Strawberry Road as his primary address even after the election. Um, I'm trying to honor the board's uh, request uh, for brevity, and I've probably already exceeded it. And I apologize if I have. I will answer any questions, but I will ask that on the basis of affirmative proof, the affirmative proof being the statements about home, the voting record, where he voted in the November general election in 2016, the affirmative proof um, of that deed, the affirmative proof that the daughters do not go to school uh, in Summerfield, it is not their home. It has not been their home. It may be, that's up to them, but that's the future. What is transpired up to now does not add up to a residence in Summerfield, North Carolina. So I'm going to ask the board uh, to find and conclude as you have the power and duty to do that he is not a resident of the North Center Grove 2 precinct and that he is not a qualified voter in that precinct. We know where he's a qualified voter and it's in Greensboro. I thank the board for your patience. Thank you. <coughs> You may. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Hurley. <clears throat> Mr. Hurley, just just based on your recollection of the evidence, if you could cite it in here. Um, are you contending? When do you contend the evidence shows that Mr. Rotrek voted in Greensboro? Last, he said he voted in Greensboro in the November 2016 general election. After he said he was had moved in September of that same year. So, what evidence is there in the record that shows that he? Are you contending he says that he moved prior to voting in the Greensboro election? He represented to, in order to vote in Greensboro. It's a, it's a, he said he voted in Greensboro. I understand that. <coughs> so, so in order to do that, he had to represent his residence as, okay. as Greensboro. He can't say, he can't go to the Greensboro precinct and say, I live in Summerfield. Right. I want to what, what evidence is there in the record that prior to voting in Greensboro that he had represented his address or his residence was strawberry. He testified and we, we had a great uh, number of questions uh, which I eventually understood him to say that in September of 2016 his testimony was that he moved to Strawberry Road. Okay. That, that's my recollection of that. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to, uh, to ask? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
difficult for me to hear at this point. I think you did a very good job earlier. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you wanted to, why don't you come forward and spend about some time? You might be not be a politician, be short winded. That's what you're saying, correct? You, you want me to be short winded and not be a politician. <laughs> okay, I'm not an attorney, obviously, so I'm not going to come here and overstate the case, overstate the facts, and bring a bunch of drama. To define what's a home and what's not a home. Everybody's got their own You're doing a good job of that. Of home is. Let's just keep you know, we didn't take our pets there seriously. I have dogs on invisible fencing. I'm, you know, regrading the property, tearing things up. I resent your. your, your you know, I mean, that's hard to do. Your, what, right. what you represent an attorney to be. So go ahead, just tell us what you want. Anyway, <laughs> point B, I don't know what two, 2016 has to do with the voting in 2070, because I did live in summer field in 2070. I did change my voter registration. Was that a nation my part? Absolutely. You know, it would be such a big deal at this point. But the fact is, I did live in that house 30 days prior to being registering. Anything that happened in 2016 has nothing to do with that. The state statutes say so. It also talks about intent. It gives me the ability to temporarily move out of the house, which I said I've done, and I have a good excuse. I got a permit. I'm reconstructing a house. I'm getting it done as fast as I can. As soon as it's done, I'm going to begin it because I'm going to get thrown out of my own house. And that's really what the facts come down to. Because me and my wife failed to change some addresses on some property addresses, that doesn't disqualify us for residency. That just means we were a little slack about changing some addresses because we knew we weren't moving out of Lewiston Road in the immediately. We knew we had some time. One of those things, we were just changing the addresses as we were going along and, you know, kind of an oversight. But we have changed all these addresses in because we know we've got to be at a house in June. So as the mail comes in, we start changing things as we're going in. You know, we didn't do that as early as we should have before. But again, state statutes say I'm allowed to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, please. Okay, any discussion by the board about what the bodies are Well, it appears to me, Joe. I'll let you start. It appears to me that the, the narrow issue in front of us is whether uh, Mr. Roachuk is authorized to vote in the May 8th um, primary in Summerfield based on um, his residency. And um, if you look at the statute, there, there's lots of things that have been said, but I'll tell you what, what is persuading me at this point. Um, some things are more persuasive than others, but what, what seems to be persuading me is that it appears to be um, a permanent proof that um, by, the, by the challenger that he um, currently sleeps and has slept in, in um, the Lewiston address since at least April 8th, which would be approximately 30 days prior to the May 8th um, primary. And the statute says in the event that a person's habitation is divided, um, then the location of the bedroom or usual sleeping area for that person with respect to location, that issue shall be controlled as the residency of that person. So um, then there's, there's another provision about temporary um, residency, and if I had to decide that, it appears to me as though that they moved temporarily into the Summerfield residence, knowing that they were going to move out so that they could they could construct that residence. Um, I'm also persuaded by the evidence presented by the challenger that the children remain in school um, with the Lewiston address, um, that his work in his office remains at the Lewiston address, that his um, broker license remains at the Lewiston address. And while I believe that he intends to move and to be in Summerfield in the future, um, presently I believe that, at least pursuant to the statute that I read it, um, that he seems to be um, in Lewiston. And there are places that I like to be, but right now I'm here. And so um, I think that's, that's persuasive to me at this point. And um, I will say that I feel the same way, that um, in order to fix your residence, it has to be fixed. You have to abandon your prior residence. They never did that. 
In fact, it was stated that they had the intention of moving back to that residence. They referred to Lewiston as home several times throughout the course of this testimony today, and so it's, it's fairly clear to me that they identify that with Lewiston as home. They haven't actually established a residency in, um, in Summerfield on Strawberry Road, um, or as far as I can tell, any other place in, um, in Summerfield. Um, the fact that, I mean, if, if you told me that you were moving, but you never, you didn't change your voter registration for over a year or somewhere in the, uh, about a year after you reportedly moved, and then um, in that year's time period, you still voted in Greensboro, that leads me to believe that that home is still Greensboro. If you use the Greensboro address for the school system, um, even though I understand that they could live separately, and people do live separately, um, I understand that, but it seems to me if you're a family unit and your intent is to be in Summerfield, then you could have certainly, they could have gone to Summerfield or the Summerfield schools. That you don't leave your pets behind if you intend to change your residence to another residence. And so it seems to me that they never vacated, never abandoned, never moved from the Lewiston Road residence with the intent of remaining away from that residence. Um, it, it appears to me that it was his intention to move back and at some point to be a resident of Summerfield. Um, I'm sure they like that home. I'm sure they want to live in that home. I'm sure that they will move to, well, I'm not sure, but, but the, I'm sure that today their intent is to move to that home in Summerfield at some point in the future. It, June, July, August, September, I mean, we heard all about delays, so I know how that works. But today, and um, in the, and prior to the May primary at all, um, I don't see that they have, um, that, that Mr. Rotruck is a resident of the precinct in which he, he had, um, he is currently registered to vote in um, Summerfield. And so I think that the candidate, I mean that the challenger has met their burden. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that they intended to try to avoid um, or somehow falsify their residence or anything along those lines. It is merely, you know, a part of, of life that um, he lived in Lewiston and there were lots of issues that came along with selling a residence, but that's where he resided and that's where he intended to go back to because he couldn't live in that house while it was under construction. And so he never abandoned his prior residence. And it's a nuance, I think, probably um, that he may not have been aware of um, in order to establish residency in some place you really have to have a fixed residency and you have to make, um, and that has to be your permanent home. Um, I think that he moved back to the Lewiston home and the Lewiston home is his home until or unless the um, Strawberry Road property is completed and he establishes his full residency there. I have no further input. Well, the, the only thing I'd say, I'm not persuaded by pets one bit. Uh, as far as making the home they can or they can't. Heck, it, somebody might be, uh, I had friends that get a dog and their wife's terribly allergic. There goes that pet, and they wasn't there very long. I do sympathize with uh, the, the uh, invasion of privacy, so to speak, uh, having to do all your stuff right here. Uh, I ran in four elections, and I can share my two drawers of death threats with you. Okay. There's some people out there, you know, just didn't like me for some reason. Uh, I don't think anybody here bore, bore you any ill will, or at least I hope that's not the case, but it's very hard to uh, run for public office, and we appreciate people that run for public office because it's a hard thing to do to put your name out there on the side of the road. So I wanted to uh, tell Mr. Rutherford that. Okay, any motions? Um, I'll move that we uphold the challenge um, as to Mr. Rotruck's um, voter registration in NCGR2. Second. There's been a motion made. Any, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay. 
All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Then the uh, challenger's petition is uh, sustained. And I think, uh, is there any other? You need to read it to put a part of the record that you notified. That's the that's the When this uh when uh, since this challenge has been sustained, Mr. Colica, we direct the staff uh of uh to cancel the registration of Mr. Rocher in the precinct uh at Lewiston Road. No. Hmm? no. Correct it to correct it to Lewiston Road. Yeah, correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there anything, Ms. Ms. Cal, do you have anything else? Any, any of the members? I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move it Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned.